Oh, we don't need fucking don't need that shit. Different video. Oh. My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today I just wanted to have a quick discussion about what I was talking. Uh, it's actually over a few videos we've had um, parasitic losses in the engine, I've been talking about engine cycles and what have you, and I was talking about pumping losses, and you know, as two strokes come down, they have to compress the you know the crankcase and all the rest of it basically it acts as a pump. That's that they're basically they're part of their valve system, so to speak. You have something here, you have something there, you want to pump one to the other, and the piston has to move, and so on and so on. Now, um, and mainly the reason why two strokes do that is because they cannot basically, um, because of all the ports, and because the inlet ports are at the bottom, because the exhaust ports are about halfway up, they cannot um, basically produce a an efficient and effective low pressure vacuum. At, low pressure region which is what people say vacuum should I say low pressure vacuum idiot um, so you know with a four stroke as with a four stroke as the piston goes the entire stroke on its way down that produces a low pressure region and then as soon as you open the valve obviously then the outside air will want to flow inside all good with a two stroke as your piston comes down on the power stroke that is the problem um, your exhaust port is open your gases go out and all the rest of it and then when you actually open your transfer ports if you weren't pumping anything, if you had a separate, you know, just uh, no crankcase breathing, just a port, um, which they do do, and there is a two stroke with deflectors and all the rest of it, and basically just a cross flow two stroke. We will go into that one day. Uh, it's not really that high on my priority list of things, simply because there's not many of them that really exist anymore. Um, but yeah, so what I want to do is I want, to, and, and people's question was, well, surely if you have a um, two up two down so if you have a piston up here two pistons down here and a piston up here with a um, fucking pen again they don't last very long these fucking pens and these are Stadler you know these are Stadler whiteboard lumi colour markers these aren't the fucking cheap ones <laughs> welcome to the workshop today we're going to review dry markers any road, let's fucking get on with it. So people are saying when this piston goes up and this piston goes up and this piston comes down, this piston comes down, surely then there the pumping losses uh, don't exist because as one goes down, one fills up. It's like a syringe in a syringe. As you push one syringe down, the one pops up and vice versa. And that is the point. So when we talk about these pumping losses and all this, you have to think, it's like, you know, talking about static or really slow examples of me going, as your piston comes down and all this, that and the other. There's a number to remember and you should all just, it's easy to remember, this is the thing, it's really easy to remember, is that at 10,000 RPM, regardless of two stroke or four stroke, at 10,000 RPM, there are two strokes in that. There's one and then there's two to do a full circle because this is revolutions. Yeah, so revolutions, 10,000. So if there's two strokes per revolution, one down two, there you go. So there's basically 20,000 strokes per every 10,000 RPM. So it's double basically because there's two strokes, simple maths and all the rest of it. Which means if you divide this all by 60, because that's per minute, if you divide this by 60, that's three, three, three. It's the easiest number to remember. Right, it's 333 strokes per second. So at 10,000 RPM, you can see why engines struggle to get enough air in. You can see why they struggle to have, um, why you have to basically advance your igni ignition so much. You know, it is incredible. 333 strokes, that's one down, one up. And you can actually, this is how you work out piston speed, and we'll go into that eventually. You know, that's fucking nuts. So you can even use this to work out, um, not actual accelerations, but basically distance and speed covered by your piston. So let's just say, you know, you've got a 100 millimetre stroke for simple maths. That times that is 33,300. And now we've got 33,300 uh, 33, millimetres. 
we knock that off, that off, and we, yeah, we're left with 33.3 meters. All right, so that's how far we've got to go. Your piston at 10,000 RPM has just traveled 33.3 meters per minute. Now you might not think that's a lot, uh, per second, sorry, not per minute, you idiot. You might, you know, 33.3 meters a second. You know, that's nearly the distance you're covering at them kind of speeds. That's just fucking bonkers. You know, this is a little piston that's going up and up and up and up and down. Every second it's just covered 300. And after, what is it, that would be times 10, 10 seconds. After 100 seconds it's covered a third of a kilometre. You know, it's mental. Anyway, let's get back to um, these pumping losses and all the rest of it. Let's just rub all this shite off. So, people are saying to me, you know, surely these four strokes just balance themselves out. Well, no, they don't balance themselves out because, let's just say, you have 250cc per cylinder. Yeah? So, top or bottom, the piston will displace that. So, if this is a 1,000cc engine, this is 250cc. 250cc below and 250cc above because if you can create 250cc then you can squash out 250cc so you just place my three twenty two hundred fifty 250cc then let's just pretend there's an imaginary line like that and then let's just pretend you know this one's got 250cc right but it's got 250cc above it because this piston is about to come down this one's about to come down so this is the way it's going to go and this one is on its way up that means that this 250cc has to fill in the 250cc below this piston because it's about to move. Right? It is about to squish this and this is about to squish this, but this has got to move here and the 250cc above that has got to be sucked in and what have you. You've got to move 250cc of air from here to here and you've got to do this 333 times per second at 10,000 RPM. Are you fucking shitting me? You know what I mean? It's got to move all this air this way and it does, and that's the pumping that you feel. You know, you might feel, oh, as this goes down, this goes up, you know, this goes down, this goes up, it just moves the air. But you, you're getting into the realms of where you start to break the speed of sound. And you've got to remember that it's not just a clear path, there's webs. There's webs like this, and then there's a crank journal. You know, there's a few holes, a few breather holes to allow things to pump around. But these are all restrictions. You know, it's a blank web. It's a, a blank web with your crank, and then it's got some holes, some more air holes in it. And it's got to worm its way around all this, and it just can't keep up. So the pressure in the crankcase increases and then decreases, then increases. It's always lagging behind. You know, it's it, you've got to think about it like the lightning and like the thunder. You know what I mean? The lightning is the thing moving, the thunder is the, the, the lag that the air has got to accelerate, you know, and then basically move to that location. And it can only generally do this at the speed of sound. So, you know, I'll do the calculations in another video if people are really interested of how fast some of these air, um, this air transfer rate has to be. But even at tick over, I'll do a, I'll do a video right now. Um, of the SV. So this SV is a V-twin, it's a 90 degree V-twin, so they're 90 degrees out of phase. Do that video now. Right, so here's the demo. If I get a pointer out, nice yellow pointer, you can see that this tube here, if I poke that tube, this is this tube. This is the crankcase breather that goes basically up into the air box. And there you can see a breather. This is a V-twin, this is a four-stroke, and we're going to start her up.
So there you have it. As you can see, pressure. And there is a bit of vacuum there, as obviously as the pistons go up and down, you get this pumping backwards and forwards. And you can see that there are, the air is moving. So you can see on that video, you can actually see that it's blowing out mostly, but there is that suck back as well when I put the paper close enough. Um, and it was Mr. X Quando who put this comment up. The fucking idiot and said four strokes never have crankcase pressure. Well, that's weird how this fucking thing does, doesn't it? It must be the only bike in the world. So yes, there are pumping losses in four strokes because this piston comes down, it compresses that air that has to shift it. That's the thing you've got to realise is that people say, well, the air just moves from one cylinder to the other and backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards. But air will not move until it is you know until it's forced upon unless you have a, a, a you know an increasing volume now you might say yeah well you've got one cylinder here and one cylinder here this volume's decreasing this volume's increasing so surely the air should expand into this rapidly growing what have you but it's been booted up the arse you've got to remember that this piston's coming and it's that pumping it's them pumping losses the next time we have when we have the sv open and the next time i have another engine open or something like that i will show you um, I'll make a point to show you the fact of if this is all buttoned up and sealed up, there's not many passages for that air to get through. You know what I mean? It's as simple as that. And this is why we have crankcase breathers, because there is a pumping. You know what I mean? Don't get me wrong, the crankcase breathing hose does amplify the pressure. The simple fact is you're pumping, you know, that thing's pumping fucking um, 500cc every time a piston goes down and a piston goes up. Um, you know, and it's all coming through a little hose like this. But the fact of the matter is, is there are pumping losses, and um, because, you know, you've seen it. Um, I did try and stick a pressure gauge on it, apart from I don't have a big enough adapter to white wedge it in the thing, so you'd be able to just see it fluctuate. It's not much pressure, but you'd be able to see it fluctuate. Um, and when I get that, so when I get the adapter, the right adapter for it, or when I can be bothered to find the right adapter, we'll show you. But... Um, you know, this is, there are pumping losses in four strokes. Now, this is what is important, and I will actually do a video um, leading off the back of this, which is um, about the different pumping characteristics of different engines. Uh, 90 degree V-twins pump differently than just, say, four stroke, um, you know, two up, two down engines. Three cylinders pump differently. You know what I mean? Even though three cylinders are all, you know, 120, or generally most, um, Three cylinder engines are 120 degrees, so you should think that they are all pumped nicely. It's actually weird with the, the three cylinder. A lot of things are weird with the three cylinder. But yeah, I'll show you the differences um, of how these pumping losses change. Because a 90 degree V-twin um, has a bit of a weird characteristic. And, um, you know, and when you change that angle, it isn't seriously important, but it's something that has to be taken into consideration. And it is a loss. It is a loss just like waste heat, waste heat being the biggest one. But sound, light, you know, vibration, oscillations, um, friction, viscosity of oils, pumps, so on and so forth. Any road, I hope that was like a uh, more of an anti-reply to comments and stuff. Hope that makes sense and I'll see you in a bit.